Time for our hot topic of the day. Effective December 2026, the federal government will discontinue budgetary allocations to professional bodies and councils. And I've been joined by Frank Elianya, news editor, Business Day, and Bola Olojede, public affairs analyst, to take a look at this very important topic. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Okay, so the federal government, in a bid to cut down on costs, um, has uh, taken this step, and at least 25 professional bodies and councils under the Ministry of Trade and Investment, uh, the Ministry of different ministries, have uh, been affected by this decision. Let's start with your take on this, uh, Bolao. Okay. Um I believe this is a step in the right direction. Um, in the first instance, why should the government be passing subvention onto professional associations? The right way for professional associations to be funded is by the members of the association. That is the best way to fund a professional association and keep them professional. Um, if at all, the government is going to support them. Government might be supporting a specific initiative that a particular association is um, is projecting because government uh, has an interest in furthering that particular initiative. Those are specific situations. But a, 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 a situation in which, as a matter of appropriation, we allocate funds to professional bodies and councils is inappropriate. So it, it, it's, it's good time, it's right about that time that uh, uh, the, the DG of that institution, I, I know he has a number of initiatives he has uh, wanted to push across. This is probably just the first one that we are seeing on the table. And it's a step, if you ask. Yes, Ben Akubese, the DG budget office of the Federation uh, made that known. Um, Frank, let's take your take on this before we push further, move further with this discussion. All right. Um, I think um, perhaps the government uh, somewhat had an, uh, uh, had a good intention when they started it in the first place. Um, maybe they, they felt like this was one of the ways to um, um, get Nigerians engaged in some of these um, bodies and also to improve their uh, skills acquisition. You know, at the time that it started it. Um, but having said that, I agree with uh, Gula Horn um, uh, that um, it, this is a step in the right direction in the sense that, um, it, uh, in as much as we've already started it, um, there, there should have come a time when we would have said, okay, we have achieved the aim that it was um, this intervention or um, this uh, uh, um, funding was supposed to have achieved. And then um, these bodies were supposed to stand on their own and fund themselves, you know, but continuing to fund it uh, infinitum um, was never supposed to be the way um, to go. So I, I feel like this was the um, the right call. Yes. Um, perhaps maybe um, the urgency for me isn't um, is a concern. I, I don't see why they are giving them uh, 2026 before um, they finally um, end the funding. I, I was rather thinking, um, um, if you're going to do this, do it already, uh, you know, just like you did uh, the subsidy, uh, just like you did the NARA um, devaluation, do it already. Um, why wait to 2024? Why wait to 2026? Um, this is obviously um, a dip into our budgets, and at the moment, we don't seem to have the revenue to continue to fund some of these um, um, projects. This is not particularly going to yield much result. That uh, I just spoke with Mr. Zikanyato, who believes that this is just a little fish in the pond. They, they should be looking at some other um, bigger fishes to, to, in their bid to get more funds and cut costs. That this is just not a significant move. Do you share that thought? Yes. I agree with you. Um, for me, I, 
I think um, that, yes, the government is going to reach out to um, the ministry departments and have them um, reduce some of their costs. But importantly, I was expecting the government to have made a major announcement in his own court, you know, in his own salaries. Um, uh, uh, we haven't seen that. Um, I was particularly disappointed yesterday when the president uh, um, came into the uh, Lagos state with a, a very long convoy, um, which, which just tells me that... Uh, they're not ready yet to make uh, the sacrifices that they're asking the rest of Nigerians to make. I One of the things that uh, some of us have advocated for is the sale of the private jets that the presidency um, continues uh, to occupy or to uh, use. You know, so, so some of those things and then the salaries of some of these people that uh, run around government that uh, are supposed to be government officials and all that. Uh, I think a little bit more transparency in how much they are paid and what the government is doing to ensure that um, um, some of those um, things, uh, appendages or monies that come to them are no longer coming, you know. It is what I would like to see. I like to see the sacrifice the government itself is making in terms of reducing its own costs, because um, much of that cost is coming from what the government is spending on. So, uh, um, yeah, the ministry department will reduce some of the salaries. Yes, we expect that. But then, what exactly is the government itself doing concerning its own humongous cost? That for me is the key. Well, okay. can you hear me? Um, Okay, well, you, you, you've, I can heard, hear you. yeah, you've heard Frank, but perhaps you talk to us about what have been the effect of budgetary allocations on the prevalence of corruption in Nigeria. Well, um, let, let, let me start from where uh, my brother has talked. Mm -hmm. uh, there is the issue of policy direction, which is beneficial in itself. So somebody might say, okay, how much is the total allocation that has gone to this uh, council in the past. But that is not the issue. If we focus on that, we'll miss it. Of course, that will be some amount. We should focus more on what that portends for issues around, say, the Orosaye report. Because that is a good start point. Of course, I disagree with waiting until 2026 also. I don't know why 2026. But we need to revisit something like the Orasaya report and be able to have a total reform. That if you look at our budget, you can see the, where the money is going now. We can see the chunk that goes to personnel cost. Some departments, some MDAs were actually established, were, were, were meant to be more or less temporary or to address a situation that existed maybe 40 years ago when they were created. Those situations do not exist anymore, but the departments have persisted. And we have continued to send money to those departments, despite the fact that the reason for their creation no longer exists. We need to deal with that. And of course, corruption issues that you mentioned. So you take the, account, the former accountant general, who is still accounting for 89 billion naira that is said um, to be uh, missing somehow. You have the former minister of power, um, who is also being held to account for about 22 billion naira, which um, has not been explained as we We must, as a matter of fact, if there is something that the former president said that I agree with him uh, on, whether he did it uh, or not is another story. It's when he said, if we don't kill corruption, corruption will kill us. And it is a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a reality. 89 billion, there are states in Nigeria that the entire net revenue of those states it's not up to 80 billion in a year. So you are when a man can sit down by himself and misappropriate that amount is a cause for worry for us as Nigeria. And it's some area that the government must also look at. Frank, can you yes. hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, let, let's still pursue this you. question on the effect of budgetary allocations on the prevalence of uh, corruption in Nigeria. From where he stopped, where Bolaho stopped. Okay, so um, we have uh, um, seen the first move of the president uh, in uh, ordering for the suspension of the EFCC uh, chairman. 
um, some words, you know, um, looking like um, they want to reposition the EFCC, and then of course the appointment, uh, the, the new appointment uh, of uh, the um, I, um, police um, inspector general of, of police, and uh, of course some other uh, moves um, that the government has made. But um, be that as it may, Bola is very, very much on point about um, outstanding corruption cases that has not been dealt with. We still have the statistician general uh, um, corruption that uh, we don't know what has become of that case. Um, we still have several other corruption cases that are pending. And not just that, um, we have uh, several um, government officials currently um, occupying positions of power now um, that uh, have been fingered in the past with uh, um, corruption cases. Um, we haven't seen um, any move towards um, uh, uh, how to recoup some of those uh, funding of some of those uh, um, monies that were diverted into the personal um, accounts, you know, and yeah, the government is looking for money, but then right under his nose, um, the monies are buried there in the ministry department, in uh, in uh, some of the political um, leaders that it has uh, um, appointed in the past. All he just needs to do is uh, go back, look at all the names of the people that it has appointed, and look into the account what they what they have earned over the period that they were in government it is easy to get these monies back and it is easy to hold these people accountable again it boils down to the issue of accountability and the issue of uh, transparency uh, which i don't think the new government has um has lived up to you know so uh they seem to be making a lot of moves towards other things how to make more money um for the economy but about about keeping account about being transparent this is what we are doing this is how much we're spending um the, the president is just he is yet to declare his assets um several of his uh, um appointees and uh, we don't know how much they are earning this vice president is yet to declare his asset uh, uh, assets so those things are fundamental if you're going to talk about issues around corruption so you don't just go after you don't go you don't just go after um people and uh, try to you know um get monies that they have stolen but you too you are seen to be accountable you are seen to be um holding up your own part of the bargain to say i i i come to equity with clean hands you know so those are issues for me um that will point uh, that will really um, encourage people to say, okay, yeah, this government is serious about uh, fighting corruption, you know, and uh, I've said it before um, to someone that if we are able to tackle corruption or if we're able to just recoup, say, 50% of the monies that have been stolen from this economy... Yeah, Frank, I think will... you're... Sorry to take words from your mouth. Your notification button is... It's interfering. Can you just do something about it? The point is... Um, if we're able to recoup at least 50% of the monies that have been stolen from this economy, we will be able to fund the budget at least in the next five years without having to borrow money. Because all of these monies have been stolen and they need, to, they need to be brought back into the economy. And that's what we're expecting that the new um, administration will do in the coming days. Maybe they're still trying to boot because they are just like, well, um, a month in office but um we're expecting to see a lot of transparency a lot of accountability yeah the dmo recently found its voice and wanted this present administration against further borrowings uh, and we know that president tenubu is targeting six percent six percent annual gdp growth um first of all the fact that the G dmo is just now raising the alarm over borrowing even though nigerians cried foul a lot cried a lot against the barriers of the last administration saying, look, this is too much. And we were told by the DMO, the finance department and all of them that were still within the borrowing window. So it was okay. And then suddenly we're hearing, don't borrow anymore. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's become uh, unhealthy for the economy. Talk to us on that. And the fact that the President Tinubu is targeting 6% annual GDP. Do you think that's been overambitious on his part? Yeah, I, 
I think it's being of um, ambitious, but then, but then there's nothing wrong with uh, you know setting your standards uh, a little higher than uh, um, than would be expected. Um, but then, um, what we expect is that when you're setting a, a big dream or when you're setting a, a bigger uh, um, vision, it should be matched with uh, um, the appropriate um, action. Uh, so, um, you're saying you want to achieve six percent. Um, before you leave office, the, the question is, what have you put in place presently to make sure that that um, happens? You know, um, that in itself is not a crime. It's, uh, it's perfectly legal and is perfectly expected for, for economies to want to borrow money to fund some of its projects, you know. Uh, but in the past, and... Uh, what we have experienced is that um, the government borrows money and often these monies are borrowed for targeted projects. But in the end, you don't, you, you don't see that money being utilized for the projects for which they were borrowed for. You know, um, the Lagos Abandon Expressway, for instance, a lot of money has been borrowed for that road. Up until now, it is not near completion. Every year we are told how um, it is uh, almost 70% uh, completion, but at the end of the day, nothing happens, nothing concrete happens. So for the past um, over 10 years, we have been building one single road and been borrowing money over that. And we have borrowed money for railways that, that have not been completed. You know, we have also borrowed money for railways that we linked from Nigeria to other countries that we have no business linking to. You know, we have borrowed money for project that doesn't make any sense. You know, uh, for, uh, sometimes um, I ask myself, is it that the institutions that are borrowing these monies um, don't do their due diligence before giving it? But m maybe also they are thinking, okay, this is a sovereign um, um, body. This is a, um, a country um, on its own. So whatever happens, it will always find a way to pay us back the money. So they go ahead and borrow you the money. But then it becomes incumbent on you as the person who is collecting the loan to use it judiciously. But that has never been the case in the Nigerian uh, um, system, which is why we have about 51 trillion um, debt now. And we can't account for what it has been used for because we still have fundamental development uh, development issues infrastructures not in place we have several things missing you know and right now we're looking there's no way really that we're not going to borrow again we have to still borrow so the dmo has over the years you know um, gone ahead with the government maybe because they want to keep their job maybe because of the politics uh, um around power that they want to continue to maintain you know but for whatever reason, they have continued to advise the government, oh, yeah, we are we are still within the limit for you to keep borrowing. You know, but this time around, they said, okay, let's speak up. You know, I don't know what intentions are now, but then um, I, I know that they know um, that um, the, their advice now seems to be too late because the money that have been borrowed in the past were not used for what they were supposed to be used for. So the government now has to borrow again to fund the same projects that we have borrowed in the past. And which goes back to what we have said before, that there needs to be um, um, accountability, transparency. Mm. The government, this government, this present government now needs to go back and look for the loans that we have collected in the, in the past before mm. it came into office and ask questions. What did you use this money for? The times when we tell ourselves that um, um, one president cannot probe another president should be in the past. If a president is, if a past president did not do what he was supposed to do, and is found to have maybe misappropriated funds, mm -hmm. or his ministers have misappropriated funds, if you need to call him to come and answer for it, you should do that. It is not witch hunting; it is just service to the people because people are paying for the uh, um, for the fact that we are um, using all our monies to pay for deficits on these loans. So it is not kind of the people. So why should we be kind on a past president? So that's what I'm expecting to happen. If you're talking about corruption, finding corruption, then we need to do it robustly. It needs to be everyone that has a hand in whatever went wrong with the economy. Yeah, well, on Olojode, 6% annual GDP targeted by President Tunubu. 
Very okay or over ambitious? That's one and two. Do you see President Tinubu having the political will to investigate former President Muhammadu Buhari? There are Nigerians who are saying you cannot hold a mirfali without questioning former President Buhari. Okay. Um, I'll start from the GDP. So, um, there's there's um, no, um, nothing that says uh, Tinubu will not be able to achieve that GDP target that I have set for himself, or that the growth rate um, is over ambitious. This economy has too many distortions. Uh, we've continually spoke about um, fuel subsidies. Um, several other subsidies apart from fuel. Um, and with that fuel subsidy came a lot of corruption. I, I was at, I worked at a very senior level in the oil and gas uh, uh, sector before. And I know precisely um, what I'm talking about. It is if if they open that can hmm. and you see five percent of what is going on in that space, you will watch your hand clean of it and say, "Let's remove this thing." Like yesterday, that is one reality. That's a distortion. The, another distortion is the multiple rate. There is even a rate for people who are going to Jerusalem and Mecca. Who runs an economy in that kind of a manner? So, if we begin to take more right steps in the right direction we will start to retune the economy and it is possible to step it on the right pedestal for the kind of growth that we want it is achievable in my opinion if we do those reforms yes it probably will get worse before it gets better but that is the reality my my take however is that in implementing some of this reform number one we must pay close attention especially to the most vulnerable in the society and see what we can do to tackle the burden, the disproportionate burden that they may carry in implementing all this. We must, we must carry them along and communicate properly uh, in, 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 with that. Uh, what was the second thing you wanted me to speak? The DMO office? Oh, the DMO office. Yes, um, some of the previous comments from the DMO office uh, might have been political because the dmo had technical people who understand that space very well why i said it's political is that the emphasis of the dmo in the past has been on issues of debt to gdp ratio when you look at our debt to gdp ratio it is beautiful it is fine we are comfortable but the reality is that nobody repays debt from gdp you repay the debt from your revenue so if your revenue is poor, you need to match the brakes as far as debt is concerned. And we saw how that played out in 2022. According to the World Bank, in 2022, we used 96% of our revenue to service debt. Who does that? So that's, that is the balancing side that DMO was not emphasizing before. And that balancing side is that while our debt to GDP ratio is fine, our debt to revenue is obviously not good enough. So hmm. one other thing that we must fix to address debt issue is to ensure that we address the revenue issue as well. That is very important. Okay, Frank. Yeah. Having looked at some of the policies that this present administration has taken in the last few weeks that it came on board, what, what, how would you assess the way the government is going about it and how Nigerians are feeling the impact? Okay. Um, for me, I, I, I will speak to that from two perspectives. Number one is that are those reforms, are those policies, policies in the right direction? And my answer would be emphatic yes those are the directions we need to go do i agree perfectly with the approach no um I, I probably would have approached it in a different manner for example um the removal of subsidy or the uh, multiple the crashing of the multiple rate they, they have to happen but then some other things that i believe we needed to have done before we we hit that thing um in my opinion were not done 
apparently, like some people will say, there are several ways to skin a cat. So that is the way the government has chosen to approach it. Now that it has gone that route, it must now take the necessary step to address the things we felt it will have addressed before implementing, before, before you know, cutting off those matters. So for first subsidy issues around palliative, minimum wage, and other things that will lessen the burden for the people, fine. Um, for things around foreign exchange policy, how do we rev up our supply issues to, to match up to the kind of pressure that is being seen on that window? Uh, those are the kind of things that government will now need to work on to ensure that we can get the full benefit of these reforms while at the same time we take care to a certain extent the heavy burden that these policies will unleash on a segment of the society. Thank you, Leanya. Yeah, uh, so um, to just uh, chip in there, I, I think that um, we could have gone about it the, um, a different way. Um, for me, it, it was uh, the same Nigerian thing of uh, putting the cart uh, before the, um, putting the horse before the cart, you know, or putting the cart before the horse, sorry about that. You know, uh, um, we, we tend to, we tend to, um, first of all, go and uh, uh, um, look at the problem from the top and then leave what fundamentally um, costs the issues uh, or leave them unaddressed. You know, um, what we have found or what we have seen so far is a recurrent failure of a past administration. You know, um, they being unable to put in the right um, infrastructure, they being unable to follow the process to the latter is what brought us to where we are. Yes, this administration had to do what it had to do um, because we are at uh, a desperate time. And of course, you know what they say about desperate times, calling for desperate measures, mm. you know. But then again, I will reiterate that this government needs to make the same sacrifices that it is asking a lot of Nigerians to make. Um, Nigerians can be buying fuel at uh, 490, 500, 600 naira, and then you are still wallowing or walking around, junketing about town with uh, um, a hideously long uh, convoy, um, jetting uh, out and in uh, with, with uh, um, several retinue of uh, uh, um, uh, um, personnel. You know, those times should be over. This is a time for prudence. This is a time that we need to see our president walking the talk. You say we should cut down. We sh you say we should make sacrifices. The question is, what sacrifices are you making? Because it's about trust. Is 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 a uh, is governance and governance is about trust. The people need to trust that you are with them in the same boat. You have put them in a shoe in a boat that is very difficult for them. The price of goods in the market are very high. A lot of things are going wrong. School fees are very high. And people can afford a lot of things that they used to afford before. So we also need to see that the government itself is making some of these changes for itself. You know, uh, um, that for me also will lend itself to what we have always said, which is about um, the kind of people that they employ, the kind of uh, um, uh, uh, quality that they bring to the table and the type of policies that they pursue. Yes, we have seen uh, um, some of the moves that seem a bit positive, you know, but then um, what exactly is the government itself doing inside? You know, I need to see some automation around government processes. We need to um, see an end to the days when, uh, um, um, what is it called, ghost workers um, were an issue. Um, in 2023, we shouldn't be talking about ghost workers again because there's technology that ensures that these people um, don't continue in office. So for me, those are things I need to see. The government needs to work its talk at this moment. At least 25 professional bodies and councils under the Ministry of Trade and Investment, the Ministry of Information and Communication, the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, the Minister of Transport, the Minister of Mines and Steel, the Minister of Justice, the Minister of Works and Housing, and the Minister of Environment will all be affected by this new development, uh, which include the Teachers Registration Council in Nigeria, the Computer Registration Council, a, host, a whole lot of them. So what will change 
with this new policy? What's going to change after now, after 2026, 20, when they will stop giving them these allocations? What should change with these ministries? Balaho. Okay. Um, the, it, apparently, that must have been why some time is, is allocated for them to make that transition. Because what it means is that a gap will be created in the funding of this body. And these bodies now need to redesign their revenue model. How do we get the money to fund our mandate, our mission? So um, over the next couple of years, or there, there are about, about three years, 2026, these are the things that those associations and councils will work on so that they can transit from this uh, spoon-feeding spoon uh, uh, situation to some sort of autonomy where they run their own numbers and they can, uh, you know, make their own revenues and run their secretariat, pay their own uh, uh, bills, as is required of professional bodies. And where the government will uh, lend a hand if there is a sink in certain agenda of this institution and what the government seeks to drive, of course, the government can support, but that is a support, not a mandatory appropriation from the budget of the federal government of Nigeria. Um, I, I, I hope it doesn't uh, aggravate issues of job losses and the rest of it, but rather will drive efficiency in how those organizations operate. There is something about just sitting down there and money is thrown at you continuously. You don't necessarily become good because money is just being dropped on your lap. When you can actually go out there and make some of this money by yourself. Frank? I think if, uh, if this had been done a long time ago, we would have seen a lot more productivity um, from some of these uh, councils. Um, I was reading some of the list. I saw that of literacy. And I, and I just couldn't reconcile what they do with um, the number of uh, illiterate Nigerians that we currently have. Mm -hmm. um, some of them in health, uh, some of them in agriculture. Um, uh, perhaps maybe m many of them have become a lot redundant and a lot uh, lackadaisical towards their, um, towards their functions uh, because they, they didn't have to go out and, uh, and uh, get their money. Um, the government just throws money at them every year, so they use it and do whatever it is that they um, um, use it for. So there was no productivity somewhat um, in some of these... Uh, councils and... Uh, uh, councils. So I would jig them up. This will kind of like um, wake, wake them up to say, it's time for work. It's time for you to do something. It's time for you to... Um, uh, it's time for you to go out there and be more productive. So what I am looking at or what I'm seeing is that going forward, because they now have to make their own money, they can now be more accountable. They can now, the boards of this... Frank Elanya. Frank Elanya, news editor, Business Day, and Bolaho Olojo Day, public affairs analyst, Mr. Lodjete, can you hear me, though, even though Frank cannot? I'm right here. All right. Okay, so let's have your final words um, as we wrap up this discussion, um, hoping that Frank will find his voice and join us and give us his final words. Okay. Um, my, my, my take would be that I, I, I believe this is a step in the right direction and that government should pursue it and extend it beyond the professional bodies into several other MDAs of government that we need to revisit and question all over again. What exactly is this institution doing? What exactly is this other one? If there are institutions we need to merge, let's merge them. If there are those we need to scrap, let's scrap them. And get a more robust and efficient civil service in this country. It is doable if we have the political will to go ahead. And the Orosaya report is a good place to start. Frank, have you found your voice? Well, sadly there, we couldn't reconnect with Frank. Well, Frank Eleanya, a news editor, Business Day, and Bolaho Olojo, the public affairs analyst, have joined us this morning on The Breakfast. 
for our very first hot topic, FFG stopping the budgetary allocation to professional bodies and councils come December 2026. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, that's the much we can take on the breakfast this morning. Thanks for joining us. I am Maureen Menon. Join us again tomorrow for another episode of the program. <laughs>